Yes, and uh, the recording will enable other people to listen to this call later on, or you can re-listen to it as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Julie. Okay, great, Carol. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, and great to be with you all. Um, I Just a little point of information. I'm not able to see the questions on the chat box on my screens here, so uh, just so you know that, Jofi and Carol. And others. Yeah, well, those go to Jofi, and she'll she'll be handling. Right, and we'll bring those back. Yeah. Those at the end. Yeah. Okay. As Carol indicated, I was a delegate this past last year for the United Nations Association of America. They had 20 uh, delegates, and I applied and was accepted. And uh, so I prepared this presentation, most of it, uh, for um, a presentation at the local chapter back in July. Uh, so there's a bit of a UNA angle to it, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so I want you to know that basically for me, this is a love story. Um, I fell in love with New York, first of all, the first time I was there at the age of 17 when my family did a summer trip to the 1964 World's Fair. And we visited the UN and I was captivated by it then enough that uh, several years later when I was in college, I had the opportunity to uh, go from my college in Indiana to a, the U in semester on the United Nations sponsored by Drew University in Madison, New Jersey. So ever since then, the UN has been part of my life. It goes back to that particular time in, um, in my life. So here we are at the UN. Uh, the, uh, CSW this past year was, as you see, March 11th to 22nd. It's always two weeks long. Right across the street from the UN is the Church Center, um, where the U, uh, UUA has an office um, that Bruce Knox and Allison Hess uh, run. And um, there are 40, build, uh, 40 organizations in that building, that uh, half of which are uh, faith-based, other organized, others like the AME, Seventh-day Adventists, Quakers, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Mennonites, and various Catholic orders. Um, and so a lot of the meetings from of CSW are ha uh, happen there as well. Um, and it goes back to my time uh, 50 years ago when our classes were often held there as well. And also ICUU has had meetings there when ICU met in New York in uh, 2014. Then here we are walking into the UN. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through what it felt like to be there from my perspective and uh, Phyllis's. I was most of the time there with Phyllis, Carol was there as well, and Ellen. And so this is walking you through as, a, as though you've never been in New York, or even if you've been in New York, uh, you'll get a sense of, of this. So across the street, these are the banners that we walk down the sidewalk to get to the to, to go through security and then on the other side of security oh just before you enter the UN building itself is this big view over the East River um, uh, emphasizing the importance of the sustainable development goals they are live and uh, well um, here at the UN the attention to them here we are walking into the lobby where we are greeted by Nelson Mandela, a gift from South Africa in 2018. Also in the entryway of the UN building is, I love this large um, Chagall um, piece window, the, the stained glass. And then there's also, which I hadn't remembered from earlier visits, the UN flag from the bombing of the UN headquarters. Walking down the hallway, you see the portraits of the nine men who have been secretaries general of the UN over the years uh, since its inception. My personal hero is Dag Hammarskjöld the second there. And of course, as you see, there are, uh, as you are hearing from me, there are no women yet on that um, hall of um, fame as it were. So we are here for the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, which is the only other organized, uh, UN body that meets regularly besides the General Assembly. It's a functional commission of the ECOSOC, that's a term that you'll hear a lot, 
Economic and Social Council, and it was established way back at the beginning of um, the UN days. UN was launched in 1945, 1946. It was established my personal birth year. Uh, others of you can probably relate. Um, and it meets like, uh, like you've heard every year um, for two weeks in March. Every year there's a theme. For example, in 2018, the theme two years ago, the theme was challenges and opportunities in achieving gender equality and the empowerment of rural women and girls. And it was, I was particularly charmed by Phyllis's participation. And then when she realized that, oh yeah, she was a rural girl too, having grown up in Iowa. So she was able to relate on that level as well. And this past year when we were there, the um, theme was, as you see there, social protection systems. Everything was uh, viewed through that lens, access to public services for, uh, the, um, and sustainable infrastructure for, towards gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. So here's the major um, poster sign in the entry there that uh, you've seen on some of the uh, marketing data for the uh, marketing materials for this particular uh, webinar already. And then walking down the hallway, there's lots of um, posters about pointing out, reminding us what it is that it's our right. Comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care, high quality education, modern services for water and energy, adequate paid maternity leave, dignity in old age, equal sharing of unpaid care work. All of these issues around the world for the past 70 years have been um, part of the th uh, theme and objectives here. On the United Nations USA website, I saw this wonderful picture of Eleanor Roosevelt and this, this uh, quote, which reminds us all of what we do. A woman is like a tea bag. You can't tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. Here we are in hot water all the time. And of course, here's the personal is political for me because actually I met her in 1959. Um, my family trips included a, uh, a stop in, at Hyde Park that summer. And we happened to be there the day that we discovered that um, every year, every summer, she would bring her children and her grandchildren on a tour of Hyde Park. This was three years before she died. Um, and now I was uh, only 12 years old at the time. I really, I didn't have a clue who Eleanor Roosevelt was. It was a different era where we didn't have quite the same uh, wider consciousness as uh, probably children do have, 12 year olds uh, do have uh, today. I didn't know who Eleanor Roosevelt was. Uh, I was being educated about FDR by visiting his home as my family did. But it was my mother's reaction to her presence that said to me, oh my God, this is a woman that I need to be aware of. You know, it was, I was, I, actually as I'm remembering it, you can hear in my voice, I was in awe of how, how much my mother was in awe. And these are two um, snapshots that she took. And you'll see me in the left there in the little, um, with a little white sailor hat um, and the red shorts, my sister to the right of me in the, in the um, uh, teal colored shorts. She's actually younger than I, but she must have been standing on a step. So anyway, that's, that's another part of my personal love story with the UN and with Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay, so the United Nations Association um, is one of 4,000, as you see, NGOs, and now we are another one. Um, 20 delegates were allowed, as we will have. And the CSW itself, uh, in, six, in this past year, the number 63rd one, uh, is, had official meetings for the commissioners in the General Assembly um, building, and 300, more than 300 side events that are on the UN premises, mostly in the ECOSAC building itself. And then 400, over 400 parallel events, which are off site, which is what IWC will be presenting this year as well. In um, this past March, there were over 9,000 participants there from 640 organizations representing 137 countries. 
Now the first, um, uh, CSW is two weeks, as you know. Um, and I was there for four days, as was Phyllis. Um, Thursday and Friday of the first week, Monday and Tuesday of the second week. It's such an intense experience, all of those events and all of those people that four days was frankly quite enough. And uh, so I flew on Wednesday from California to New York, but I had read or there was enough materials beforehand to let us know that on Tuesday was an opening session with the Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez um, that was broadcast on UN Web TV, which I didn't, hadn't ever known about. Uh, and many of the uh, 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 sessions of uh, the UN are broadcast all the time on when, uh, UN Web TV and they're available forever. They are archived. So anyway, Listening to him was a really great introduction right here at my very same place I'm sitting right now. And one of the things he, the strong things he said was the central question of gender equality is a question of power. We know this, but it's certainly good to have it articulated. Still a male dominated world with a male dominated culture and power is not given, power is taken. He also went on to say, and this was a theme we kept hearing throughout the time we were there. We have to push back against the pushback. The resistance to change and of course because people do not like power being taken and of course in this Trump and and strongman era we're experiencing this even more uh, more strongly right now okay so then when we're actually there I'm going I'm um, this is the first session that we attended um, and I chose personally I chose it because um, Women in Jerusalem and, and issues of Palestinian women are of, of great and dear interest to me, but because of having traveled to Palestine um, in 2008 and having been become radicalized because the leaders of my tour at that time were uh, uh, our Palestinians who are retired here in Claremont. So um, it was really great to learn about the domestic violence shelters there, but again, there's still too much patriarchal context and tribalism. So that was in the conference room in the General Assembly building, right past, as you go downstairs, if you've ever been there, um, in, uh, there's a, the bookstore and the gift shop, and then going into the meeting rooms, you have to present your badge and go through security to get there. So this actually happened to be a conference room right there in that first, very first um, uh, entryway to conference meeting rooms. And again, issues of no real protection during the occupa Palestinian occupation uh, for women. The next session that we went to, I went to was um, uh, this one on social inclusion of women being independent in um, a couple of different countries. Thailand was, uh, focused on and one of the things that was uh, particularly interesting to me here was that this was the first time we heard um, a man coming out and speaking very strongly about um, equality not um, the the social the um, SC, sustainable development girls are not possible without gender equality uh, so he was uh, this was the the Japanese ambassador to the United Nations, while also recognizing that current systems are in, uh, insufficient and the need to work with men to achieve. So there's that consciousness, the articulation of that consciousness is, is coming right at the beginning of, of my experience there. The next session that I went to was uh, sponsored by the United Nations Association of San Diego with UNA New Zealand on the subject of non-binary identities and social security systems. Um, and this was the first place that I actually uh, introduced myself using a pronoun. That's what was uh, uh, the pronouns that I use. She, he, she, her. Um, that wasn't, that hasn't been part of my experience in the past, but that was um, um, one of the things we were asked to do. And this was, um, uh, information about the U.S. legal issues regarding identity cards and passport gender identities, how New Zealand is prioritizing marginalized voices in public policy. So, um, and of course with the new female, the prime minister there, 
we've been hearing uh, some really great voices out of New Zealand. Plus the cisgender assumption, how that hinders access to some social services. And I point out here that this meeting was in the church center uh, across the street from the UN. Another session was um, something that we hadn't heard about, the Women's Empowerment Pr Principles Forum, where 2,200 corporate CEOs have signed on to gender len lens investing and quotas being accelerants. So that was really great to hear. And, and the, this picture here, I want, um, want to give you a sense of what it was like to sit there in the ECOSOC chamber. I mean, this really feels like being at the UN, where as you see, there are microphones and, and headphones and uh, interpreters. One of the people who spoke here was a, an executive from Mary Kay. And I love this line, let's make thinking like a woman something to be proud of rather than being denigrated. Thinking like a woman, let's be proud of it. Another session uh, that I really, uh, really treasured was at also offsite at the UNFPA building on, on Third Avenue, which is a couple blocks away. Uh, I'm a walker and I love walking in, in, um, in New York. So it was fun to uh, find yet another building how young women are demanding social protection to prevent uh, violent extremism and achieve sustainable peace. This is a particularly dynamic group that I enjoyed meeting. The woman on the left from the Philippines, we actually talked about trying to, um, and when I told her about how we've been doing work in the Philippines, um, about how we, we talked about trying to collaborate. We haven't quite, couldn't made that connection yet because she's been out of the country when things have been going on in, in New York. We, anyway, uh, we're, um, I'm hoping to see her again and um, maybe make something happen for IWC with um, the Global Network of Women Peace Builders. It seems like a really great fit. And the young woman from the Congo, from Nicaragua. And one of the things that these young women talked about uh, was about naming and shaming governments, identifying that these governments are actually at, uh, at, the fault, at the fault of a lot. And I know particularly in Central America, Honduras is one of those um, where that is the case. Um, another comment that they made was um, that the, it, we should not be talking about countries as poor because the countries so have so many resources, we should talk be uh, talking about uh, people are poor, but uh, at least in resources, not necessarily in spirit and energy, but that the countries are not poor themselves. And it, same thing and here from uh, Morocco, Algeria, Canada, an indigenous woman, South Sudan. Um, and this senator from, um, from Canada, um, looking for my note, um, she's got a really, a great comment, which I, um, mm, sorry. Uh, uh, we have to stop thinking that words do not kill. Leaders who speak violence are responsible. Leaders who speak violence are responsible. We know that so well. Then another session that was particularly memorable was the screening of a 23 minute film called Women, Peace and Power um, with, that focused on, this had been on PBS. Um, I can't seem to find a link anymore. I don't know what's happened to it, but um, about the roles of women in peacemaking in Northern Ireland, Afghanistan, and Liberia. And one of the fabulous quotes from Northern Ireland in the film was Bernadette Devlin, the famous activist, it's not because women get written out of history, they never get written in. And here at this particular screening, uh, the blonde woman there uh, is, um, um, the director, uh, Jeannie, uh, and producer, Jeannie Redeker, and she was flanked by uh, um, the actual 
Minister for Equality and Justice from Northern Ireland. We know in Ireland, we in Ireland know that women are key to peacemaking. And here are two of the women who were uh, part of the film. Um, Anne Carr and Monica, both still active with community relations facilitators in facilitation in uh, Northern Ireland. And uh, I love this also, it was never about one of us, but all of us. And the, the film really showed that. In uh, Liberia, from Liberia, we had the Nobel laureate herself here, Lema Gaboui, um, who won the Nobel Peace Prize with two other women in Africa. Um, she helped organize women to protest the, the civil war that was going on, uh, and they, including the tactic of, launched by Lisi Strada of withholding sex. That all added up to helping end the second uh, Liberian civil war in 2003. It so happened that a friend of my, my uh, Zimbabwe professor friend here in um, Claremont, uh, Kibukili at Pitzer College, had asked me if, if I knew somebody in Liberia. She needed a, a Liberian speaker for an event she was hosting. And uh, so at the time, I after this presentation, I meet, made a beeline for Lema here and battled forth my need. And she immediately pulled out her card and she said, contact me, I know somebody in LA, and my friend was able to make that connection. So that is also what uh, CSW is about, making these kind of connections. The other particular fabulous connection made at that uh, film screening was this woman from Afghanistan, from Kabul. Um, she, in the film itself, there was a, a scene of women uh, standing outside talking of, about their frustrations. And one of the women said, we need to educate ourselves. And Mabuba Siraj said very strongly, holding up her hand, we don't need to educate ourselves, we need to educate others. Well, it so happened that uh, outside the uh, screening room afterwards, I got in a conversation with her and I said, and when she heard I was from California, she said, oh, I have relatives in Mission Viejo. I said, well, do you come? Uh, do you ever come? She says, yeah, I usually come for the holidays. Well, she came for the holidays and she spoke in December at RUNA here in Claremont. And, it, and, she, and when she said, uh, I, I told her in Claremont, there's a wonderful flagship restaurant in the village um, owned by a beloved Afghanistan couple who've been here almost 50 years. And she says, oh yeah, I know them. And sure enough, when we went to have dinner there, she didn't just know them, they were clearly longtime good friends. So again, the small world uh, is revealed at uh, CSW with people from all over the world. The next, another session I went to was here um, about breaking stereotypes. Of course, in this era, uh, uh, issues regarding Muslim women are of particular interest to us. And here, as Muslim women, as agents of change in these four countries, one of the um, comments, strong comments made was, the lack of knowledge of our religion limits success, not the religion itself, it's the lack of knowledge. And they talked about how education is happening, yes, to rectify that, both inside the um, uh, Muslim community as well as outside. So you see also here how uh, there are the, um, microphones and you probably and you can i don't see anyone with headphones but if you look in the back you can see the um translation booths and there are indeed translation happening in all the country all the languages of the un english russian french china well and uh and also arabic in this case you can see here english and french up at the top russian and spanish um the translation boots. And uh, women said, I've always taken Islam as my friend. Islam is on our side. There's a rightful inheritance for women is in is Islamic principles. That's so great for us to hear. Another uh, commenter from Uganda talked about how in order to break stereotypes, men need to be enlisted. Again, the issue of working with men, not against. 
from Cutter, the uh, comment was the importance of training girl children to speak. And again, in some cultures, uh, that's repressed, but the training them to speak. Okay, so this was in March. We're gonna have a little break here, a little uh, momentary break here for, uh, if I can get this to... <laughs> Saturday, March 16th, um, that's St. Patrick's Cathedral there at the end. Uh, and uh, this year, the um, St. Patrick's Day will, uh, parade will actually be on Tuesday. It was, it was quite a hoot to witness that and, and watch that. Now back to the session. On, on Monday that week, um, I attended a, a parallel event offsite at the Salvation Army building on 52nd Street, uh, sponsored by an organization called The Grail, which I only learned about in recent years. The Grail is a 100-year-old organization that started for, with, basic, uh, with Catholic lay women. Now it's ecumenical. And they're operating in 28 countries. And some of my friends here in Claremont have been involved with The Grail in different countries over the years and connected me with this. But this was an example of an off-site uh, parallel event, not unlike what we will be creating. Uh, so even though I didn't know that at the time, um, you know, I was really happy to uh, go to this event. Uh, and one of the things you'll see here is that there are men here as well. Um, and this is about creating equitable international communities because that is where they are work, working. One of, uh, here we go, they're talking about shared power, but not if one can't get a seat. And I took these pictures primarily because you notice, these are several women who were supposed to be there from um, Zimbabwe and Uganda, but visas were denied, um, which is an issue that we have encountered. Jofi knows it better than anyone about um, getting women to uh, some of the IWC events because the African countries in particular, it's a common theme. Even at that opening town hall with um, Secretary General Guterres, one of the questions that was asked was from a Zimbabwe woman about um, the problem of getting visas. And he kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, yeah, it's an ongoing issue. Um, so here are the, this was um, uh, the mode that they use, these questions um, and gave, to stimulate discussion. Uh, what is an example in your own community where you experience shared power? A woman from uh, Marie from the Netherlands talked about engaging in common work um, and creating safe space for LGBTQI refugees, as well as adv advocating for our own um, children. Um, again, an audience question, how I can use or exchange my white European and American privilege. So here we do have the issue of white supremacy being um, addressed and, and discussed. And then what SDG do you feel most calls you into action for your community and why? Um, and some of these are the examples of about the SDG for gender equality. Also, one of the young women from um, Portugal talked about um, victim blaming and toxic masculinity. So these issues are all around the world. Here the, uh, the woman in the pink, Mary Lu uh, Kay Luchart, is uh, connected with the women I know here in Claremont and had invited me to this. And I loved what she said, give your boys dolls, teach your girls to change tires and change oil. These are the women who've been working together, um, mostly in Africa, um, at least that I know. And they had a wonderful song that they ended their session with, 
We join our voices for the world in a circle of friends. All our voices will blend when we touch common ground. Walking back from the Salvation Army building, again, here's just a, a, some uh, scenes of what it's like to be in New York. And I walk past this flag and plaque um, about the Kingdom of Eswatini, which I didn't know where it was. But I've learned it's actually the new name of, um, or the old name of Swaziland. Then walking down the East River, toward, back towards the UN building, there's the Chrysler building. And walking past this fabulous dragon, uh, um, horse slaying, horseman, King uh, St. George slaying the uh, dragon. This was created, it was a gift um, on the 45th anniversary of the United Nations, um, created by a native of Georgia from fragments of the Soviet missiles and U.S. Pershing nuclear missiles that were destroyed under the terms of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty of 1987. So missile fragments were used to create this, this fabulous statue which is a lovely symbol of disarmament. We should attend to more, of course. And then Phyllis and I turned this, uh, attended this particular session on um, silver linings, social protection and empowerment of aging women, because there were um, women from the Philippines involved, where uh, we've, um, I have, my church has a partner church in the Philippines. Phyllis has been involved with the um, Women's Livelihood Projects in the Philippines with Chris Nielsen's New Pathways Institute, which um, has been a, a supporter of, which IWC has been uh, involved with. So we learned about the proportion of aged is smaller now, but rising. And so there's a need for more health care. And, and of course, there's the greater vulnerability to uh, poverty. So that's in the Philippines. And then this last session that we attended um, has a, a fabulous um, title, What Cultural Change is Needed to Consign Sexual Harassment to the Dustbin of History. And this was in the large chamber where there were 581 seats um, and they were, it was pretty much filled. Uh, one of the most interesting parts here was that the uh, second speaker there on the panel is um, the man is um, a senator from the Republic of Georgia, and he talked about how, when all when all of this happened um, recently, he himself did a personal poll of the women he knew, and um, of the thirty some women he talked to, every single one of them reported some experience of sexual harassment. Um, so he, that was like a radicalizing moment for him. And as a father himself, he said, okay, this is something we really need to attend to, and he's made a commitment to work for it. So that kind of, those kinds of stories from men um, were inspiring to hear as well. And then walking across First Avenue to the Ford Foundation building uh, for the last session we went to, um, up the uh, Anton Sharansky steps, the um, Soviet uh, activist resistor years ago through Ralph Bunch Park. And this great quote that the UN is all about, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war no more. Yes, let's learn no, war no more. And uh, the session that th this was, the session was about um, the, um, a caucus. We're bringing people together, starting to gather together from different, from the by regions, for uh, action steps. And uh, I love this comment here. We need to be feisty, coordinated, and aware. Um, another point that came out here that I hadn't ever thought about: Why does the Holy See have a seat at the UN? There aren't any citizens or women there, but it certainly affects women's lives. The, the Holy See. Okay, so here we are. At the end of CSW, there's always a, a document drawn up called the um, Agreed Conclusions, 22 pages. 
Um, 51 items uh, urging governments. I tried to since, uh, pull out the important uh, points here. Strengthening normative legal frameworks, strengthening women's access, strengthening access to public services, and mobilizing resources, all of those. The bottom line is the good fight must go on for women's rights, equality, and empowerment. Um, here I'm, I'm just, I just want to highlight a young woman who came to my presentation here in Claremont, a 15-year-old who had been a delegate with the UN, with the Girl Scouts. They send um, uh, 20 girls every year, Girl Scouts of America. And she was one of the young women working on a speech that they actually presented in the General Assembly Council. And I had a copy of it. And the thing that was most interesting was that Again, they raised the uh, point here, boys, boys and girls should be taught to become strategic partners uh, towards um, gender equality. So it was, it was fabulous to meet this energetic young woman. And uh, when I saw her mother recently, it sounds like she wants to um, um, try to go again this year. So getting that energy starting at, young, at such a young age is great. Okay, our last night in New York, Phyllis and I had tickets to the uh, uh, Carnegie Hall, where neither one of us had ever been in, to a concert, where we heard Renee Fleming uh, sing. But my real hero, it turned out to be the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And I read this article some time ago, and I looked up real quickly, and sure enough, there she was, Elizabeth Rao, the principal flute player, who had uh, uh, sued the Boston Symphony Orchestra, because she wasn't getting paid as much. And she got a huge settlement afterwards by winning this suit. So she's one of my heroes that the, the work of the CSW is all about. The morning that I was giving this presentation, I, in the pool, I happened to think about wrapping up the presentation with this particular uh, image. And the fact that, because this was in July, it was right after the, the women won, the American women won the uh, World Cup. Just like the seas are rising, women are rising. And the theme of equal pay, equal pay, uh, the chant uh, rang out in my mind of, of this, about the whole thing. Um, huh, I had a couple last slides here. Where did they go? Anyway. Um, about inviting you all to the next one this year. Um, shit, shucks, I'm so sorry. I don't know where they are. Anyway, um, March 9th to 20th is our two, um, two weeks. Most of us will be going the last week because um, on Thursday of that last week will be the um, uh, parallel event that IWC has been accepted to, pre uh, to um, present on the projects that we've been involved in over the past couple of years, past decade actually. And uh, Rika Lamar will be there, yes, uh, from India and other projects from uh, Transylvania, Philippines and um, Bolivia will be highlighted as well. So um, consider coming. And especially if you're on the East Coast, consider if even if you can't come to the um, workshop, the uh, CSW itself, come to the workshop. It'll be off site. So you don't have to go through security. But if you can be a delegate, this morning Carol said we have 14 delegates already signed up. We've got space for six more in our contingency. But the UU, um, UNO office also has 20 slots, which they don't use very many of them at all. So come on and join us. Um, the CSW is really an inspiring, um, motivating project to be part of. And IWC is fabulously happy to be now able to be, um, be in consultative status and more actively engaged. So. That's, um, oh, and, and I want to invite Phyllis to um, raise, uh, to mention the issue of um, hotels staying there. So, Phyllis. Um, am I unmuted? You are. Yes. Um, I had an email from Barbara Beach yesterday, and this is what 
uh, instigated my question here. And she asked if there was any um, sort of an agreement or a, any idea of, of IWC having a special hotel or whatever. And I explained that some of us have already uh, signed up at the Seton Hotel where Julie and I stayed last um, at, at the spring sem seminar. Um, so I, I, I offer that as a question. Uh, has there been any, any thought given to, where, to a joint place where people might gather? I told Barbara that the hotel that was most suited and closest was the Millennium Hotel right across from the church center. So it, it may be a little expensive, but that's what I recommended because she has, she has to decide whether she can really handle it physically. Um, and, and the Millennium Hotel, you said, was more, uh, perhaps more accessible. Uh, well, with, it is right across the yeah. street that goes up from the United Nations. It's, it's practically right across the street from the church center. Hmm. So, and, and the hotel where we were staying has steps leading up to it. I'm not recommending that hotel. I've never stayed there, but it is, it is the closest one. I just throw that out as a conversation to be had. And as Julie was talking, I also want to put on the, um, the suggestion, and maybe, I don't know if you're going to get to logistics later on, but the uh, CSW provides an app for your phone. That, Thank you, good, yeah. That was really, really helpful. It, it is probably not up there yet, but you can download it on your phone and it's really great because each day you look on and, and there are, all these sessions are going on at the same time, but it will tell you at, the, uh, at that, on this app, you can go and say, okay, this one is here, here, here. You could plan your day much easier with that. That's how, that's how it was easier to keep track last year of what we wanted to go to. The, um, th this is Carol. There will, about a month before CSW starts, there will be uh, published online the list of all the parallel events and, and side events and events on the um, UN campus. It's an enormous, overwhelming list. Be prepared. Uh, it's very hard. Julie has given us a wonderful tour. Um, behind that tour was a lot of time spent um, figuring out which, which events to go to. Um, as as I, I, IWC will not be necessarily recommending uh, events for you to go to. Um, you can choose your own. But we will have some times of getting together. Uh, we will share at least two meals together. We have some conversation about doing a cultural event or two together. Um, this is Carol, I live in New York City, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm local and I give some help. But uh, coming as a member of our delegation, uh, we, we will not go around together all the time, but we will find some places to gather and be together and we will be in touch about that. Okay. Jofi, uh, you have questions. Uh, yes, hello everybody. I just unmuted myself. I realized I was I was muted as a host. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Julie, for this wonderful, insightful presentation. I think we all learned uh, a great deal. I really liked uh, that quote from um, Eleanor Roosevelt that you mentioned, and that uh, here we are in in hot water, all of us, um, and. Uh, practically working for you know women's empowerment and the advancement uh, of gender equality and the very very powerful uh, notion and feeling of being all, you know with all these women from all around the world and 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 and, and the power of the collective I, I really appreciated uh, that um, I look personally look forward to be to sitting in the ECOSOC chamber as you did last. You know, this will be my first time uh, being there, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you all on the call will 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 join us and and experience that feeling. That that would you know, that's uh, that's something that I really look forward to. Um, I, I'm looking at uh, the chat box and I do not see any questions. 
So what I propose to do, now everyone is unmuted. So if you would like to make a comment or if you, would, uh, if you have a question, a specific question for Julie or for Carol or for me, just, uh, just, speak, just speak up. Um, uh, one, one, actually, we do have, it just came through, we do have in the chat box um, a message from Michelle Lebensmack. Uh, Julie, and I'm reading it, so Julie, as a board member to the UUPCC, this is the UU Partner Church Council, what would you like for me to communicate to them, especially in light of the connections with India, the Philippines, and Transylvania? We will be meeting this Friday. Oh, wow, that's great timing, Michelle. Uh, communicate to them that um, the encouragement to any anybody on the east coast to um tap in and join us if at all possible um or at least to come to our the session on the on that thursday morning that would be great and uh, and also michelle actually if if some if you want to put out on the on roger's newsletter um, you know, next, actually, now that you think of, um, I'm, I'm thinking about it, there is a partner church uh, talk, con, uh, Zoom call with um, uh, Roger next Thursday night, the 23rd, um, and I can mention it there as well, um, because that would be, uh, because there's all kinds of uh, people from the Philippines there as well, so it's yet another networking support ec um, opportunity. So that's a great suggestion, Michelle. Thanks. Um, yes, and Michelle, if you would like to say a few words, uh, I noticed that uh, you are muted, but you muted yourself, so I cannot unmute you, just in case if you would like to say a few words. Actually, I have one other suggestion to Michelle is, you know, this will be um, um, available on a YouTube uh, clip, so whenever that's available, you can share that with them as well for, for uh, the people from the Partner Church Council to have a sense of CSW as well and the internet this presentation you're saying yes this yeah. presentation right yes. yeah. thanks carol so are there any other um comments or 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 questions um well this is carol i i'd like to clarify the the fact that um there's a deadline for registration with the csw uh which is january 27th um, I think many of you on this call have already registered. If you haven't, that's your deadline. Now, if you don't, the registration is what gets you on to uh, the, the, the UN campus. And that's what gets you into the ECOSOC chamber and other, other places on the campus. If you are not registered, there's still plenty to do. There are so many parallel events um, off, cam off of the ca campus, and those are public events. You can get into them without having official credentials. So uh, it is not a waste of your time to be in the city for CSW without having registered, but in order to go into those central events uh, at the UN, you need to have registered by the 27th. And uh, you can communicate with Jofi if you need any instructions on, on how to do that registration. But it's fairly straightforward once you get into it. And, and like, I just want to add uh, to what Carol says, is that you don't have to be registered for CSW to attend the parallel event that IWC right. will be sponsoring as well. So that right. would be... Yeah, there's so, there's so much to do. Uh, you, can, you can have... A, a wonderfully beneficial and useful time without that registration, um, but the registration is what gets you to the into the UN. Right. And this is Sophie. What I, I have up, uh, if you see my screen, uh, this is the the CSW sixty four official web uh, web page. Um, and you know, if if you, if you want to find out more information, so you can just. Uh, go here i can send all of you the link uh in a follow-up email and as well as the i have up now uh the the new york uh 
CSW committee uh, uh, web page and it has actually just one second there's uh, i'm having um yeah i'm scrolling down my screen uh, there are uh, some orientation series of highlights uh to prepare to better prepare you for csw64 uh the orientation committee created a new set of videos to be released every friday until january so you can watch click on watch all videos and uh and i'm clicking on them right now i guess they probably bring up all of them um, I, I will send you the link just for you to check out, uh, uh, you know, the various useful videos that uh, you might, you know, might want to later uh, watch the overview about registration, preparation, um, the grounds pass, preparing for your trip and the highlights as well. Uh, this is Phyllis. Um, I just want to add a couple of thoughts about when you're actually there and you specifically want to go to one particular session. Um, sometimes the meeting rooms in um, the UN, on the UN grounds can get small. And I know the one that Julie and I attended on the Palestinian women, which was of special interest. By the time we got there, it was almost filled. It was pretty much filled and some people were sitting on the floor and I only got a seat because a young lady, a, a young, you know, somebody in her 20s offered me her seat so that I wouldn't have to stand or be, you know, uh, be uncomfortable. So I, I'm, I'm offering this as experience that if you really want to see a session, I recommend highlighting it and getting there early to get the seat, just in case. Yes, there, uh, and there's, there's, there's some distance between the um, venues off of the um, UN campus. So you're not going to be able to do everything you want to do if you, uh, when you look at the list. Um, uh, give yourself time between events that you really want to go to because there are, is time involved in moving around. And as Phyllis indicates, um, particularly the ones in uh, UN chambers are, are, are crowded and you want to get there early to get a seat. So, so we're coming up on 1130. Any, any other, other thoughts? We will stay in touch. Yes, go ahead. Someone? Hello, this is Kenny Peterson. I just have a question. Would you like us to do any sort of report afterwards? of the set you know what we the sessions we attended and what we learned we have a newsletter and it would be wonderful to have um a collection of reports from people um yes it's not a it, we're not going to hold that as a requirement but uh, uh a hearty invitation to, to to do that uh it's a great idea thank you yeah, thank you, Genia, uh, for offering that. And uh, we will, you know, we look forward to many different kinds of reports in our newsletter. And maybe we need to create a page on our website as well. So, you yeah, can, uh, yeah. yeah, for, for the UN. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea, Genia. And uh, because also because it can be inspiring to people in the future, not only uh, to come, but uh, to give specific um, advice about how to do it, just like uh, Phyllis said about getting early for things you really want to do and planning it out and the apps, you know, there's, it's, it's such a big deal, it's such an overwhelming experience that um, having been there once, you know, I know it'll be at least uh, easier to, to kind of tackle it the second time around. So uh, any kind of uh, handy hints, uh, that's a great idea. And I, I, want, I want to underscore uh, what Julie said. Um, four days being there is plenty. Um, I, it's, it would be very hard for me to imagine uh, being there and participating through all the days of it. Obviously, some people do, um, but uh, it's, it's, uh, four days is, uh, is exhausting in itself. So. Um, Pace yourself. Uh, don't worry if you can't get there for the whole thing because 
um, that, that's, that, that probably would uh, run down uh, your, your attention anyways. So. And actually, I want to add, speaking of uh, the energy level, because probably the people who can handle it more eat readily are the, uh, for two whole weeks, are the younger people. If any of you have children, uh, daughters or granddaughters, bring them along. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you all for attending uh, this event. Um, we will stay in touch with you. I, I do hope that you plan to attend our, our IWC parallel event. Um, there are also parallel events, <clears throat> two of them offered by um, our UU United Nations office. Uh, one of them is early in the first week, the other early in the second week. And we'll make sure that you have information about those events as well. Um, remember, as Julie indicated, you can watch this on Web TV, UN Web TV. That's a possibility if you can't get there or if there are things on days when you're not there, you can, you can see them in that way. Um, and, and register if you can or just, just come. It will be good to see all of you. As I say, we will have a couple of meals together. We will have some times to get together and talk about what we're experiencing. So thank you very much. And um, we'll, we'll see you in New York. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank, Thank you, Carol. See you Thanks, Julie. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you all. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye.